Health authorities are sounding the alarm on meningococcal and urging us to be vigilant for symptoms with a dramatic spike in the disease this year and the death of four people in just eight months. Infectious diseases specialist Professor Robert Boy is one of those joining the warning and he joins us now. Professor, welcome. What sort of case numbers are we looking at for 2023 and why have we seen this increase? Well, the numbers have been rising for two years. Last year was under 100, but this year will be nearer 150 to 200. So we're really quite concerned. Uh, New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia are all having higher numbers. Why? Well, flu has been surging this year, and flu does a couple of things. It damages the lining of your throat and lets a bacteria called meningococcus invade when it otherwise is a colonist, otherwise sits there quietly. So the combination of first having a flu infection damaging the throat that's the germ in, and then it goes through the bloodstream, causing meningitis or blood poisoning, both of which can be deadly. And are there particular age groups that are more at risk? Yes, um, you can get it at any age, and the Australian reporting shows that. But kids under two are especially at high risk, uh, and adults, uh, well, teenagers between 15 and 19. So both those age groups, there's a peak of disease due to the social conditions and also the fact that little babies don't have any immunity yet um, and that puts them at greater risk. We've been so focused about COVID for so long, it seems a lot of people might not be aware of the meningococcal threat if they get the flu. Yes, the COVID threat has been replaced by a whole bunch of infections that have come back. Because we have stopped uh, distancing ourselves, stopped using masks, uh, not used hand washing as much, because we uh, congregate in crowds, hugging, kissing, singing, dancing, all those things increase the risk of germs passing from one person to another. And so meningococcus is one of those that's creating real concern. It comes on so very quickly that it's far better to prevent it than to uh, try and recognise it and treat it because it, it develops so very fast. And how does the lack of awareness play into late diagnosis and, and, and potentially causing far more damage to somebody? Well, many teenagers and children are diagnosed relatively late, and that's why we see deaths. And that's why we see perhaps half of those who survive are left with long-term problems, scarring, um, amputation, and more commonly psychological issues, problems with their memory. So if you could just get in faster and vaccinate, uh, you can prevent uh, the complications that occur in people who survive. Vaccination available to anyone then? No, it's been available against meningococcal B, and let me emphasise that 85% of current disease in Australia is meningococcus B, and only South Australia currently routinely vaccinates. But Queensland has just announced today that they'll start a program against meningococcal B for teenagers and for babies from the 1st of January next year. So that's an advance, and it's for other states to look at whether they'd like to join them. This really needs to be across the country if, it, if it's as big of a concern as what you're saying it is. It'll make a much bigger impact if we have a national program. Well, Professor, thank you so much for your time and for the warning today. You're welcome.